So we're finding our zeros of our parabola algebraically. The objective is to solve the quadratic. That's the whole point of graphing, is to be able to solve your quadratic. And so whenever you see that word solve, that means find your roots. That's what they're looking for when they ask you to solve something. So first thing we have to keep in mind whenever we're going to solve our quadratic is we have to make sure it's in standard form. So our standard form again is our ax squared plus bx plus c. So we've always had an f of x in front of it. What's the other letter we can use instead of f of x? It could be y equals your ax squared plus bx plus c, f of x and y, those are interchangeable. But for today, when we're going to solve these, instead of y and f of x, we're going to have them equal to a 0. When you're solving algebraically, we've got to have those equal to a 0. So then recall the x-intercepts of your parabola are also called the roots or zeros of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So the method we're using today to solve these is factoring. So your steps to solve by factoring is, one, make sure it's in standard form. Once it's in standard form, you're then going to factor using one of our three methods, always making sure you factored completely, factored as far as you can possibly go. You're going to set each factor equal to zero. This is a number property we've talked about before, but we don't really talk about often. That's our zero property. We'll talk about it when we actually go to use it. You then solve your two equations to get your answers. And your answers are also known as a solution set. And then you need to check. So let's take a look at our first example. Again, step number one is to make sure we are in standard form. So if I look at number one, I have my x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. So that one is in standard form. I don't need to rearrange anything. So now we need to factor. Which kind of factoring would this be? Trinomial. So I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses. After my parentheses, I keep the equal 0, just like we have up here at the beginning. So to get my x squared, that would be x and x. Will our signs be the same or different when we factor? Same, they're both going to be negative. So then we're looking for what multiplies to give us 9, but will add to give us 6. 3 times 3. Now you still want to be doing your check like we were doing before. It's just you don't always want to write it. Negative 3 times x gives us a negative 3x. Big smile, x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Add them together, you get your negative 6x. You kind of want to start trying to do that check in your head as you're going through these. We're not multiplying it all out, no. So now, after we factored, we draw a line down in between our two factors. And we're going to use our zero property, which means either this stuff in the parentheses is a zero, or this stuff in that parentheses over there is a zero. What our zero property says is one of these two things when multiplied together has to be a zero in order to get a zero. That's the only way you can get a zero when multiplying is two times zero or four times zero or ten times zero. So what we don't know is the zero could be this one or it could be this one. So we just set them both equal to zero in order to solve. So then we'll go ahead and solve. Add three. 
So I would get x equals 3 over there. Other side again, add 3. So I would yet again get x equals 3. We have two answers there, but they just happen to be the same number. So sometimes when they are asking for the solution set, there is a special way that they write it. So I just want you to see that way so you're familiar with it. Is they would use a squiggly brace. And then they would put their answer in there. Now, since the answer is both three, they only write the three once. And then they close it. So the solution set for this would just be three. That's okay. So now we need to check our solution. So we're going to use our calculator to help us do our check. So I want you to go, go into your y equals and type in your x squared minus 6x plus 9. x squared minus 6x plus 9. We all got that in there? So let's take a look at our graph. Does our graph touch the x-axis at 3? Yeah, I mean it's a little tricky to see, but it does touch it at 3. The other way we can check is let's look at our table. When x is 3, we should have a 0, and we do. So that means our answer is 3. So that was our check. There is another way to check. Does anybody think they know what the other way would be to check? Hmm? Yeah. Plugging your 3 in, that would be another way to check it. So you would be doing 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 9. Seeing if it gives you a 0, plugging in your 3 for all of your x's at the beginning. So this gives you 9 minus 18 plus 9. When you subtract, you get negative 9, 0. So it does check out. So you got lots of different ways you can check. You can actually plug the number in, or you can check using your calculator. How many people are going to use their calculator to check? Yeah, I thought so. I would, too. All right, let's try number two. So again, step one, we got to make sure it's in standard form. That is not in standard form. I need it to be equal to a 0. So what are we going to move over to the other side? The 8x. So that gives us x squared plus 8x equals a 0. So now it's in standard form. What kind of factoring would this be? GCF. What do they have in common? The x. So I'm going to take the x out, set up my one set of parentheses. Remember, to get the stuff in the parentheses, we need to divide by the GCF. So x squared divided by x gives us an x. 8x divided by x gives us simply an 8. So now we still do like what we did in our last one. I'm still going to draw a line down in between my two factors. x is a factor, so x equals 0. That's going to be one of my answers. So then I set the other side also equal to 0. So x plus 8 equals 0, and then we're going to solve that. So I'm going to subtract my 8. So we get x equals negative 8. So again, just so you can see it, if they write that as a solution set, the smaller number always goes first. So that would be negative 8 comma 0 in your little squiggly braces as a set if they wrote it that way.
So now what I want you to do is I want you to check it in your calculator. Now the one you're going to plug into your y equals is what you have when it's in standard form. So your x squared plus 8x is what you're going to type in your y equals. No, you're just going to type under y equals x squared plus 8x. So you should have a parabola that looks kind of like that. That hits at negative 8 and 0. All right, let's take a look at our back ones here. Again, we are following the same steps that we did before. So first thing we have to do is make sure it's in standard form. Is number 3 in standard form? No. What do I have to move to make it standard form? The 22x. So I'm going to subtract 22x over. So 0 equals negative 2x squared minus 22x minus 48. Got to put them in order. Largest exponent, then the next largest, and then your number. So now we're in standard form. So let's start factoring. Do we have a GCF? Yes. Negative 2. We got to pull out a negative 2. So remember, if I divide everything by negative 2, that gives me x squared. Divide that by negative 2, what do we get? Plus 11x. Divide by negative 2, what do we get? Plus 24. Now we're going to do trinomial. Because if you look inside the parentheses, we have a trinomial in there. No, I never taught you how to factor with a negative x squared. So you couldn't. You had to do GCF first. So we're going to start off with x and x to give us our x squared. Will our signs be same or different? Same. Both what? Positives. So we're looking for what multiplies to give us 24, but will add to give us 11. Who remembers a trick I taught you to help you find your factors if you can't remember them? Go to your y equals 24 divided by x. 8 and 3. So x plus 8, x plus 3. So now this time we actually have three factors. We have the negative 2, the x plus 8, and the x plus 3. So i got to draw two lines this time. So I'll say negative 2 equals 0, but does negative 2 equal 0? No. no. So that just, that goes away. That gets rejected. Reject. And yes, you have to write the word reject. They take off an entire point off of a question if you don't write that stupid word. So write reject. I feel like you didn't write it on your final exam. No, I was very frustrated the first year they gave this regents exam because I had to take a point off for them not writing reject. It made me very angry. So that's why I always tell everybody, you need to write that stupid word. Crossing it out is not good enough. You've got to write reject. So then we set the other two equal to 0 also. So our x plus 8 equals 0, our x plus 3 equals 0. And then we'll go ahead and solve those. So I get x equals negative 8. And x equals negative 3. So again, I want you to go and check your answers. Plug it into your calculator. You're plugging in this one back here when it was in standard form. Your negative 2x squared minus 22x minus 48. 
All right, so our next one, number four, are we in standard form? Yes. So let's set it up to start factoring. Our equals zero at the end. So how do we get 2x squared? I can't just use x and x this time. 2x and x. 2x and x. Will our signs be same or different? Different. And then what multiplies 2 give us 6? 3 and 2. So again, in your head, you definitely on these ones need to do your check. Our little smile here, 3 times x, would give us a 3x. Big smile, 2 times negative 2, negative 4x. When I combine those, what do I get? Is that my middle term? Yeah. Yes. So we did that one right the first time. <laughs> so we'll set these equal to zero. So 2x plus 3 equals zero. x minus 2 equals zero. I want to take care of the x minus 2 first. That one's going to be a little easier. So we get x equals 2 for that one. For the other one, we're going to end up with a decimal, and that's okay. Sometimes our answers are decimals. <coughs> I'm going to subtract 3 first. So we get 2x equals negative 3. And then what do we divide by? 2. So x equals what? You can write it as negative 3 over 2. You can write it as negative 1.5. Either one is correct. So negative 1.5 comma 2. Again, if they were to write it as a set, just so you're used to it sometimes on the multiple choice they do. But let's check it. So 2x squared minus x minus 6. 2x squared minus x minus 6. Graph. Let's take a look at the graph. So over here on the left, we are kind of estimating, but isn't that about negative 1.5? Yeah. And then that other side hits at 2, so then we got it correct. Now these last three on here, we're just going to practice writing it in standard form. We're not going to finish solving it. So solving is pretty much the same after that factor. Set them equal to zero and finish solving. So for number five, what should we do first to try to get in standard form? Distribute. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And it equals a 4. I don't know. Is that standard form? No. What has it got to be equal to? Zero. So what do I have to do with the 4? So x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. Is that now standard form? Yes. So some of these sometimes you have a little more work than just adding or subtracting something over, like that one we had to distribute first. Number six, what would we have to do first? Cross multiply. So we're going to have x plus 2 times x plus 1 equals 5 times 4. Yeah, sh need to set it up that way first. Because if you don't, then almost every single time people get it wrong. So number s so now for this one, we have to distribute. So x times x gives us x squared. x times 1 gives us a 1x. Now we distribute our 2. 2 times x. And then 2 times 1. And then that equals 5 times 4 is 20. 
Well, let's come out our like terms first. So I get x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 20. Now we'll subtract our 20 over. So we get x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0, and now we're in standard form. Yep, 2 minus 20, negative 18. Number seven. What should we do first for that one? Take care of the exponent. Remember, x minus one squared means it's x minus one times x minus one. So you got to write that out twice so you actually multiply it correctly. So x times x, I'm going to leave my negative three out in front right now x times x gives us x squared. x times negative 1 gives us a negative x. Negative 1 times x gives us another negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 gives us a positive 1. So now combine our like terms Negative x minus x would give us what? Yep, negative 2x. Now what should we do? Distribute our negative 3. So that gives me a negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 3 equals a negative 3. Yep, and then add 3. So negative 3x squared plus 6x. What happens to our 3? Oh, it's just gone. It cancels. So there's our equation in standard form. So that one's kind of a longer one. There's a lot of steps to even get it into standard form, and then you would factor and solve after that.